Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to make snap together rotational joints in Nomad on the iPad. Let's jump straight into it, no delays. It's a joint that works like this. It snaps together and it rotates. We're going to be eyeballing it so the measurements are not going to be exact. For that you would want to move over to CAD software. You are not going to want to use this in production. This is just for goofing around, but it actually works pretty well. Let me show you how it works. So let's start here in Nomad. Let's clear the scene just so that you understand exactly what's going on here. We'll delete this sphere and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to create a cylinder and uh, we'll make it a little bit longer. We'll validate it and we're going to create a, uh, a sphere. Now our sphere is going to start out pretty tiny. There we go. And we're going to move this sphere down to the end of this cylinder, or at least a ways down of it, so that we have a good shank here in the middle. This is going to be the internal piece that fits inside the other hole. We want to combine these two pieces. So we go over here, we select them both, we go Boolean, and we do Boolean, and now that is one piece. Now we have to create the cutout that that's going to go into, the hole that it's going to fit into. To do that, all we're going to do is select it from our um, group here and we're going to clone it. Now we have an exact clone, we just scale it up a little bit. Now it's kind of hard to see the difference in size so we're actually going to hide it a little bit here so you can see. And what we're looking here, we're looking at here is the amount that that sphere is going to have to crunch down and then expand again. Right? You don't want it to have to crunch so far that it's going to break. Sorry, this is going to require some trial and error on your part. Um, in uh, CAD, I would say you'd want like you know a half a millimeter or a millimeter of crush. But here we're just going to eyeball it. What I'm looking at here actually seems pretty workable. I'm going to scale this a little bit more, and you can see it, it's mm, that's going to have to squeeze in there. It's going to be okay. We're going to go with it this way. You'll get what I mean. Just give it a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and keep working. So we have the outside part. We're going to rename this as cutter. And then we're going to go back to our original, deselect that cutter, and hide it. Now we have to modify this original part that's going to go inside a bunch of ways to add relief so that it can flex to go inside and then expand again without breaking. Now this is a sphere going through a tube, it's not going to fit. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off two sides and then we're going to put a hole in the middle so it can flex. You could do two-way holes so it could flex all the way around. There's a million ways to do this. We're just going to cut off two sides. To do that, what I'm going to do is trim then I'm going to come over here to line and symmetry should be on already. Uh, if it's not, Turn it on, that'll make this much easier. Go to your front view, of course, and then, whoops, I just did that the wrong way. Let's make sure we got the right item selected. We'll hide the big one. We've got this selected. We've got trim, we've got that. All right, we're in the front view. Whoops. And I keep doing it the wrong way. And it keeps saying the item is fully trimmed because I'm doing it on the wrong side of the mirror. So then we go here. That'll work. That's a little too skinny. I don't like how skinny that is. So I'm going to redo it a little bit. That'll work. So now it, whoops. Now it looks like this. Let's get out of our trim tool. This is what it looks like now. So we've trimmed off the sides of that sphere so that they're not going to obstruct going through the tube whenever we shove it through. And now we have to add some relief so that the sides that are still there can flex inwards to get through the tube. There are a few ways to do this. You could use like a rectangle and then bully and cut it. You know what, if you're not worried about how it looks, go to the trim tool, select lasso, and literally just do this. And that will work. That will supply relief so that this can flex and go down inside that hole. So let's look at what we have now. We have our internal piece. It's got the sides cut off and relief in the middle, and then we have our external piece that will create the hole. That's it. That's how you make it. Now let me show you how to use it, though. So let's hide both of these, 
and let's uh, create something. You know, we'll we'll do an arm here. Uh, we've got this cylinder that is an arm. We'll make it. Oops. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's go to our front here. A little bit longer. Great. It's beautiful. We'll validate that. We'll put some, you know, dips and twists and I don't know. Let's throw some some muscles on the front of it here. It's a it's a beautiful sculpture. So now what we need to do is we need to put that joint right in the middle. To do that, you're going to go to trim after you got your model all the way you the way you want it. We're going to go to trim. We're going to do line. Make sure you're in a locked off like left or right or front view and we're going to cut this where we want um, sorry, not trim, split. We're going to cut this where we want that joint to be. So we want that joint right there. Bam, we cut it. So now we should have four objects. We should have the two pieces of the arm, yep, as well as the joint. Okay, so now we're going to use this joint. To do that, we select both the cutter and the um, centerpiece that goes into the cutter. We unhide one of our pieces of arm and then we go here and we scale and move our joint so that it is somewhat centrally located where we want that pivot point to be and is embedded down in there. Make sure that the uh, internal piece sticks out a little bit, and it does. That's the smaller internal piece that sticks out a little bit. That's beautiful. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the cutter, the larger piece, the one that we called cutter. You are going to select it and make it invisible, and then you are gonna select the part of the arm that we want to cut, keep it visible, and hit Boolean. Boolean is a subtractive process here. So what we've done is we have now cut, let's hide everything else. We've now cut a hole and it's got a nice big ball chamber in there and a hole. Now we're going to hide that lower piece, bring in our upper piece and our joint mesh here, you can see sticking out. Select those two only and Boolean join those. There we go. Now we should have only two pieces, but I did not do it correctly because I didn't have them both selected. Boolean join. Now we have only two pieces. See, you have your upper and your lower. If you print those out, they will snap together and they will work just like I've used this method many times. I know it works, even though it's sloppy and ugly and fast. I did it here with the arm on my uh, old out of shape Ninja Turtle. I did it with all of the joints on my Jason Voorhees kit card that I made. Um, and it has worked very well for me on everything I've done. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm thinking about doing some more of these super quick and dirty tutorials for getting stuff done for 3D printing. Uh, let me know what you would like to see. I'm thinking ball joints next. Anyway, see you next time.